Jordan Peterson outlines the blind spots in our psychology that make us bad at investing. The problem that most investors have is not that the market's going down or that the wrong investment is even being made. It's all the extra shenanigans, the excessive buying and selling, trading options. Over a 20 year period, the average investor achieved an annual return of just 2.1% worse than almost any other sector. They got outperformed by the average real estate market returns, the average stock market returns, bonds, gold, oil, even inflation. And that is where the problem is. Our brains trick us into doing the worst possible action. That's because our natural intuitions and psychology that serve us in the physical world do not serve us with investing. But it, it ties out. into our psychology very mm -hmm. interestingly because if you plot a stock and you see it going up, mm -hmm. well, if you see if you see a physical entity going up yes. and it's still moving at a pretty decent rate, mm -hmm. you assume it's going to continue to go up. It's very difficult to shake that when you're looking at a stock mm -hmm. chart because you have this built-in embodied proclivity to assume things like inertia. It's going down very rapidly and things going down rapidly tend to that's go right. down rapidly to continue that. And there's no re reason really to assume that that's the case at all with a stock because, well, if you could, then you could predict the stock and then of course you could make a lot of money. This feeling of inertia causes us to get out of a stock when it's falling. All the investors needed to do was buy something and then not do anything with it. Unfortunately, once there is a trend that is clearly and significantly down, the damage is already done and an investor won't buy back in until they see a clear and significant trend upward. And then of course, by that time, the stock price is already higher than from when they sold. And we have a classic case of buying high and selling low, breaking the number one rule of investing. Just the other day, my wife's coworker called her freaking out saying, oh my God, you've got to sell all of your index funds and your 401k because the market is dropping. When you looked at that weekly stock chart, the market was dropping that week. But with 401k, it helps me to keep a long time horizon. My wife and I, we zoomed out on the stock chart. We looked at the last 50 years and even the COVID crash is nothing. It's just a small bump on the road as the markets tend to go upward. I cannot completely remove my biological intuitions, but being aware of the problem helps me to mitigate their negative effects by keeping a long time horizon in mind and zooming out on the stock chart. Unfortunately, the feeling of intuition is not the only trick that your brain likes to pull on you. They're paying for the fun that's associated with the anticipation of the reward. And the brain, you know, your, your emotional brain isn't that great at calculating mathematical probabilities. And so it sort of says some chance, you have some chance of winning $50 million. Well, it might be one in 380 million, but you're you know, your anticipation system isn't a mathematical system. It just says, well, you have some chance. Many investors are drawn to the high reward potential of options because some chance in my mind feels bigger than it actually is. Some chance for a huge payout. But in reality, the probability is probably closer to 0% than it is to the sliver of a fraction of a percent that my brain is envisioning. And it's not just the logical component. It also feels good to take risks. Neurochemicals that your brain produces that are associated with the kind of pleasure that people really like, which is like, for example, the kind of pleasure that drugs like cocaine produce, are produced by um, risky, high risky behavior that has the potential for high return. We like that sort of thing. Making bad investing decisions is like a drug. How are we supposed to compete with our own brain telling us that there's a chance and it feels good to do it? Real quick, if you're enjoying the video, please do me this one small favor and hit the like button. It makes a big difference for my channel. I would really appreciate it. And I'll continue to do my part and make better and better content. Back to the video. There's all sorts of causes of poverty and certainly one form of poverty and one cause of poverty is absence of a plan. I mean, you need to develop a vision for your life and that makes delaying gratification, for example, and not engaging in impulsive momentary pleasure worthwhile because you're building towards something that you actually want to attain. Avoiding impulsive momentary pleasure is of course easier said than done. And I have been guilty of gambling on a company's upcoming earnings report with a call option once or twice. My wife and I are saving money with the goal of achieving financial independence. We want to buy our time freedom and our geographical freedom. We want the ability to be where we want, when we want, whether that is seeing her family overseas 
my family in the States or, you know, hitting up the beach or the mountains. We want that freedom. And that vision of our future makes it much easier to avoid the pitfalls of gambling instead of investing. Now, that being said, we do want to avoid unnecessary risks, but it is impossible to avoid all risks. And not taking a risk is also a risk. So there's no way out of risk. It's gamble one way or another. Risk is everywhere. If you are not taking on the risk of the stock market, then you are gambling with the risk of inflation. Between 1990 and 2020, that's over a 30 year period, inflation was solidly below 3% on average. As a result, many young investors like myself underestimate the damage that inflation can cause. When I look at the 20 years before that, from 1970 to 1990, there was only one year out of 20 where inflation was below 3%. And there were many years where inflation was exceeding 10%. We cannot just put our money in a savings account and hope for the best. If we do that, we are almost guaranteed to lose money. The only question is how much. We must invest. And taking a reasonable risk in the stock market is much better than gambling with the risk of inflation. Aim low. And I don't mean don't aim. And I don't mean don't aim up. But you have to accept the fact that you can set yourself a goal that you can attain. And there's not going to be much glory in it to begin with. Because if you're not in very good shape, the goal that you could, could attain tomorrow isn't very glorious. And yes, investing can be very intimidating, especially to new investors. But we have to start somewhere. Incremental improvement is the key. There is no need for us to go straight to the most complex investing strategy that require us to analyze a company's financial statements. I can achieve great results by using the basic strategies. Investing in passive ETFs and index funds will give me better results than the average investor because the average investor is unable to stay in these funds. And there is plenty of room for improvement in the realm of passive investing. This is not an overly trivial first task, after all, because there are hundreds of funds to choose from. To make it easier, I made a video right here where I go over the methods that I use to narrow down the list of passive index funds and ETFs to the ones that tend to outperform the S&P 500. Check it out. Catch you on the flip side.